We thank the almighty God for a great opportunity to be in the presence of God. Why? Because whenever we are in the presence of God, the almighty God always instructs us. The almighty God always equipped us. The almighty God always strengthened us so that we run this race according to the pattern. So that when our journey is over, we will see him to face, face to face. So wherever you are, Whatever journey you are, whatever challenge you are having, I know our God is here this morning to minister to you, to equip you, to strengthen you, to, to do beyond what you can imagine. You know, we are in a new season. And in a new season, there are things that God expects us to do. We are in a new season. God has ushered us onto a new season. And in a new season... The life, the way we believe things, the faith we had before we move to a new season need to be changed. There are things that God wants to build in our lives, things that God wants to remove in our lives so that we get to where God has called us. And today, we are continuing in faith. The people that have gone before us, from where we read, the, from where we read in Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 32, it says there, Wherefore, time can favor us to mention a lot of them. Those of the prophets that have gone before us. But in verse 33, it says this, Who through faith subdue kingdoms? Through faith, through comprehensive faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. They subdue kingdoms. What type of kingdoms? The kingdoms of darkness. Through faith, they stood righteousness. They stood tall. Through faith, they said, no. Whatever that is going on in their life, whatever that is going on in the nation, they stand, they stood tall. They trusted the almighty God. And the Bible says there in verse 33, some of them obtain promises through faith. They obtain the promises. In verse 39 again, it says there, some receive not the promises. Two things. Through faith, they subdue kingdoms. Through faith, they obtain the promises. In verse 39, through faith, they obtain the good reward, the report but they receive not the physical promises. So two things. One, group of people that obtain promises through faith. Another, group of people that obtain good reward, but not the promise. So for today, we will spend some time to talk about the people, the, what they did, the people that obtain promises through faith. The Bible says that through faith they obtain who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouths of lions, through their strong faith in God, they obtain the promises of God, they stop the mouths of lions, lions that opened up to swallow them, lions of their time, lions that want to crush them, difficulties of their time. Sicknesses of their time, but through the faith they had in God, they obtained the promises. They stopped the mouth of lions. They quenched the violence of fire. The fire was terrifying unto them. The fire wanted to consume them. The powers of darkness, the fires from the enemies. As it was in their time, so it is at our time. But through faith, they quenched the violence of fire. What did they do? Did they eat different food? Did they live a different life? They live the same life we live, we are living at the moment. But the, God said this, through faith they quench the violence of the fire and escape the, sword, the, the age of the sword, the sword that wanted to terminate their lives. I don't know the sword you are passing through. But through faith, I can tell you, you can overcome it. Why? The men of God that have ever lived before us, through faith. When they are living through faith, it's just like as if they were weak. 
In the eyes of men, they saw them as weak people. But before God, through faith in the power of God, they escaped the sword of the fire. And out of weakness, we are made strong. Was virulent in fight. It appears they were weak, but they were strong before the Almighty God. They were strong men. They persevered. They looked beyond the physical. And that is the type of people that God are looking for. It says there, turn, turn to flight the armies of aliens because of their faith. Powers that stood against them turned and flew away. Why? They stood firm. They anchored unto God. And the Bible says again, women received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may might obtain a better resurrection. Why? Through faith. Through faith, power stood against them. Why? Faith is so important. Turn with me. Let me read a few verses again to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. You can see why faith is so important. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, it says there, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fervent verse of the wicked. The shield of faith is so important. The enemy will shoot arrows. The kingdom of darkness, the Bible says, through faith, they subdue kingdoms. What type of kingdom? The kingdoms of darkness, the powers of darkness that terrified them, that wanted to consume them, that wanted to destroy them. However, through faith, they obtained victory. The same thing happened to, uh, to, to, to Peter. He was with Jesus. The Bible says this. The devil tried to destroy him. He was the man that God wanted to use to build his church. Remember what Jesus Christ says upon you that you are the rock. That I will build my, 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 my church with this. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against this. You see it. But the enemy tried all he can. The Bible says that Jesus Christ said, said this, the enemy wanted to destroy you, but I have prayed for you. The enemy tried to consume the faith of the children of God. The enemy, all the enemy wants to do is to crush your faith. It happened to Peter. Peter was with Jesus face to face, but the enemy was not afraid at that time. But Jesus Christ knew ahead of time. He cried out and he prayed for Peter. He said, look, the enemy wanted to swift you. Why would the enemy want to stand against the kingdom of God, the people of God? Because the enemy knew that there is great deposit of God in your life. And the enemy wants to stand against that. That is what the Bible says there. It says, take the shield of faith. So that you can be able to stand against the wars of the darkness. Take the shield of faith so that you can be able to stand the powers of darkness that wants to destroy all that God has promised you. In verse 36 of Hebrews 11, it says there, true faith again. And others had trials of cruel mocking and scourging. Yeah, moreover... Of bonds and imprisonment, some were imprisoned. So sometimes some people talk about love, love. They don't talk about the things, the trials, the greatness of our God, the faith in Christ, why we need to persevere, why we need to stand firm in the power of God to the end. The Bible says there, in verse 36, they were stoned. They were stoned son asunder. They were cut off. So this morning, God is looking for people. Since we are moving into a new season, the faith we had in the former season is not the same faith we need to operate at the next level. The faith that Jesus Christ had with his disciples. Remember, Jesus Christ multiplied the bread, the fish, 
and ask them to give to, to distribute. The faith they had to distribute all that. It's not the same faith that we use to operate or to walk upon the water. There is a greater level of faith at that level. So for us to get to destination, for us to get to where God has called us to be, we are required to be men of faith. People that are determined to hold on. People that are not, oh, because of the difficulties we are having, we think of going bad. People that are determined that look in this life, I will obtain the promises. And beyond this life, I will see God face to face. I will enter into eternity with our God. That is the kind of people that God is looking for. People that God will use to build his kingdom. People that God will use to expand his kingdom. That kind of people need to operate at a higher level of faith. People that difficulties will surround them. Challenges. But they look unto the maker of life. People that will say, oh, I know. This difficulty is for, uh, for a season. That there is a God over there. God that will change season. God that will change the powers of darkness. God that will crush them. And these are the people that God is looking for. And if God is looking for this kind of people, God wants you to know what you need to do in order to enter into this new season, in order to, be, to sustain yourself into this new season with Christ. Because if you enter into the new season not prepared, thinking it's always bread and butter, I can tell you it will be hard. It happened in this way. Let me say this. At a time, you give meat. When you are a child in the kingdom of God, you, you have meat. When you grow up, if, if first you have milk. When you are a child, when you step further again, you have meat. When you step further again, you have bone. So it could be bone that God wants you to have this morning. Or it could be meat, but I tell you, it is more than normal milk. Why? God wants to use you. Why? God wants to equip you. Why? God wants to use you to multiply his kingdom for the next season. So these people that overcame, these people that overcame the fairy dust of darkness, those, these people that overcame kingdoms, the Bible says they're kingdoms, kingdoms of darkness. These people that the enemy fought, but the enemy couldn't have their way. What did they do? How we are they able to make it? How we are they able to sustain their faith through the end? Even physically, it appears that they were weak. People can tell them that they are weak people, but before God, they were strong people. So what did they do? We look at things that they have done, and if you do it, I think, I believe God, that you will advance further. The Bible says this in uh, Revelation 1, they overcame. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says this. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by, and the, what, and the, but, but they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the, their testimony, and they loved not their life unto death. One, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Jesus Christ. They overcame who? The powers of darkness, the wickednesses in this life. They overcame that by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony. That is why when we are, whenever we come over here, we give testimonies. The testimonies of the greatness of our God, the power of our God, the healing mercies, the deliverances. And the Bible says they love not their life unto death. That means if there are promises that is contrary against the word of God, they say, no, I can't accept that. I'd rather Look unto God till the end, compared to accepting promises that are not of God. So for you to overcome, for you to stand firm in the word of God, you must be able to testify about the greatness of God. And you don't love your life unto death. You say, oh, if that will end my life, as far as I will see Jesus, I'm happy to see Jesus. And that is people that God is looking for in this new season. In this new season, 
God is also looking for people that will never doubt whom they are. Whom they are before God. You don't need to doubt. You don't need to prove whom you are. Jesus Christ was presented. The devil took him. He fasted. He was with God. He waited for God for more than 40 days. But even at that, the devil was not afraid to come unto him and said, oh, if you are a son of God, but because he knew, turn this to bread. He said, no, I don't need to prove that. I know who, whom I am. For young people, devil will try to say, prove that you are a child of God. For men of God, devil may try to say, oh, prove that you are a man of God so that when you pray for this person, let that person be healed. If the person is not healed, you are no longer a man of God. It's a life on the pits of hell. I don't need to prove that I'm a child of God. I know who I am before God. So devil will use that to say, oh, prove that you are a child of God. And that is doubt. You do not need to doubt for you to stay firm. These people that made it to the end, the heroes of faith, the prophets, they never doubted the kingdom of God. They never doubted whom they are before God. They are aware that God is real. They are aware that God has the power to deliver them. And that settles it. They never doubted. For another, they believe God beyond human understanding. For Job, he said, look, I know my Redeemer revered. In Job chapter 24, verse 23. Job, ahead of time, he said, look, I know my Redeemer revered. That he will, even though my flesh is, door is destroyed, that he will still deliver me. He believed beyond human understanding. You need to believe God. You need to believe him beyond the physical things you can see, not perceive. That is for Job. In Timothy says, I know whom I believe. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, he says, I know whom I believe. I know my belief is not in any man. Because I know whom I believe, I know that that which he has committed into my hands, that he is able to fulfill it even unto the end. Therefore, I I am not bothered. I know whom I believe. For Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and I say, oh, even if you throw us into the fire, let it be. But we know our God will deliver us. However, even if he doesn't deliver us, that we will still walk with him. We will still believe in him. So what is that challenge? What is that problem? God wants you to shift your belief to the stage where you will say, oh, I know whom I believe. I know whom I have committed my life unto. I know whom I have said, this is my savior He is my Savior forever. I know whom I believe. Others, many men of God that obtained this victory, there was a time in their life, the enemy struck. The enemy tried to to, to strangle them. But they looked beyond the present moment. They lived the same life we are living now. But they stood firm. That differentiated them from their generations. Why? They knew whom they believed in. They stood firm. They know that he answered prayers. They are aware that things changes. They know that he is the author of life. So for them, sickness is not their portion. Because they know whom they believe in. These people that overcame, these people that God is talking about in, uh, in, in, in Hebrews, heroes of faith, they also hear the word of God. They heard the word of God. The Bible says this, faith cometh by hearing the word of God. 
They never separated themselves from the word of God. Day after day, they made this part of gospel their life. In the office at home, this is the pattern of their life they have determined to lead. They believe in the Rema word of God. They believe in the spoken word of God, which is this. They believe that God, when or whatever God has said, that God has a power to bring it to fulfillment. And for that, that settles it. They never thought, what if? What if? If it's the will of God, they move beyond if it is the will of God to the them where they said it is the will of God. Example. Let me give you an example about the word of God. In the time of Abraham, God made a promise unto him. However, this promise did not come to pass because of a certain, to a certain point. But at that time, there was a, 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 an advice from the wife, Sarah. Sarah gave that advice because Sarah has not heard from God. Sarah gave that advice because Sarah thought that the promise of God concerning Abraham may not be with her. So Sarah gave that advice. Maybe with another woman, God will multiply you. That what I believe that had happened. Until the visitation of God again. If you look at visitation of God again in, in Genesis, I think in Genesis chapter 22, you will see it there where God visited them again where God said that according to the time of life, I will come unto you. And Sarah was outside and had it. And when Sarah had it, Sarah, you know, laughed. The angel of God said, no. You laughed? She said, no, I didn't. But at the end, God said, look, according to the time of life, is there anything too hard for God to do that God will do this and this? At that time, Sarah had the very word of God. And that time, after that time, it comes the promise, the fulfillment of that promises. The Rema word of God is very important. When you hear the Rema word of God, don't compromise that. Just look unto him. I'll tell you one, I'll give you one testimony. When I was an uh, uh, um, undergraduate, uh, my life pattern has been from hostel because we had residential schools, like what is obtainable in U.S., residential, where students live in the campus. So most of my life has been from school, from hostel to school, from school to fellowship or church. So in this time, of, there was a time of exam that in that exam, I didn't do well. But I had two options one is to go home because of what has happened. Two is to go back to church, you know, to fellowship, for prayers, for other things. So I chose to, okay, I didn't do well, but okay, let me just go back and have fellowship with God. As I have having a fellowship with God, God spoke one word to me. He said this, though thy beginning was small, but thy letter end shall greatly increases. And that comes from Job. Job chapter 8, verse, I think, verse 7. That was the word I had. That word I told, I have not, before that time, I've not possible because I've read the Bible several times, the whole Bible. But at that time, possibly I came across that word, but I, it didn't make sense to me. But the moment I saw that, I knew that God spoke to me. I can tell you that all my degrees, that I didn't fail any unit. Because of what, what God spoke to me that time, I held on to him. It appeared that I will fail. Many people fail that unit. 
Let me say, if we are 160, at least more than 120 failed, but not me. Did I did well? I couldn't know what happened. I didn't. Why? There is God. His name and word goes beyond what any man can see. So we need to, the people that overcame, became healers of faith. They heard from God. They also believe in the written word of God. They believe this. How? When you look at Daniel, the Bible says this. That the people of Israel, they were in the land of captivity. And Daniel discovered by reading, by studying, that the appointed years of their, of their captivity was over. However, they were still in captivity. How did he got to know about this? He studied the word of God. When he came to that, he discovered the years of their captivity was over. But they were still in the land of captivity. What did he do? He cried out unto God and said, God, remember your word, your written word. That according to this time, we will be in captivity. According to this time, we will be out of captivity. However, the time of captivity is over. But we, we are still in captivity. He cried out unto God. And God heard him. God gave him revelations. When you study the word of God, you see the promises of God. That you are healed, you are delivered. But your physical life has not been delivered. What do you do? You cry out unto him. You said, God, you said this, by your stripes I am healed. By your stripes this is done. By your stripes this is my life. And once you enter into that realm and say, God, you are the one that has spoken this word, fulfill your word, God will do it. In fact, it came to a time in the life of David that, God, that David came back before God and said, God, you said this, you said that, you said that. Establish your word concerning me. Huh? David discovered that. That these are the promises that God has made concerning him, but they have not fully manifested. So he said, God, establish your promises concerning me. The same thing. So for the people that need to walk with God, the people that need to persevere in this new season, their life needs to be in accordance with the word of God, hearing the word of God, walking with the word of God, Confessing the word of the truth because the word of God and the truth must be lived and confessed and walk with. This word of God we are talking about is powerful. It says that the word of God is sharper than two aged sword, piercing the bones and marrows. That is the word of God. So it is important for you to quench the violence of fire. For you to quench the kingdoms. For you to stop the, the, the fairy dance of the enemy. For you to stop the devil, the satanic attack. You need to do certain things. The word of God, you need to apply it. Hear the word of God, walk with it. Another one is this. The Bible says in Psalm 91 that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. If you look at that, uh, that chapter, you will see the arrows that will be thrown to the people of God. Some people don't believe that. But I can tell you, as far as this scripture is, is, is true, the Bible says the arrows will come. But as far as you dwell in the secret place of the most high God, you shall abide under the shadow of the almighty God. Why? Because our God is there to preserve and to protect you. Our God is there to defend you. Our God is there to see you through. Our God is there. It says there, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high God. So how do you dwells because the, the heroes of faith 
that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God. How are they able to do that? One in prayers. They cry out unto God. They look beyond the physical. They believe in the redemption power of our God. They pray. In time like this, men ought always to pray. In time like this, in time that we need to move beyond the attacks of the enemies. In time like this, that we need to stop the, 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 the violence of the enemy. The oppressions in this world. The intimidations against the kingdom of God. We need to be men of prayers. We need to be men that are serious and bus- serious, having serious business with God. It says there, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadows of the almighty God. Why? The others will definitely come. But when the other comes in, the favor is dwelling in the secret place of the most, most high God. It says that surely the Lord, he shall deliver thee. Why? Because you are dwelling in the secret place of the most high God. Thou shalt not be afraid. For the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fired by day. In verse 5 of nine, uh, Psalm 91, it says, Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destructions that wasted at new day. These are the arrows, the challenges that sometimes you cannot see it with your physical eyes. But do they exist? They are in existence. Whether we understand it or not, they are real. Okay? So the Bible says that those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. So how do you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God? One is prayer. Two is worship. Praise and worship. You worship God. Not only in church, but even at home. Wherever you are, you build your life in attitude of worship and praise unto the living God. You see there? So those that dwell in the secret place of most high God, there are many ways you can dwell in the secret place of the most high God. Studying the word of God, believing the word of God, having fellowship with the children of God. Time we found me to talk more about uh, dwelling in the secret place of the most high God. But it is mandatory. These men of faith, these men that overcame, they did certain things. And those things that they have done is, are the few things that I have mentioned. Also, the people that overcame, they look beyond the physical, the, 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 the present problem they had. In Psalm 121, it says there, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where does my help come from? So he lift out his eyes beyond the present hills, beyond the present problems. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where does my help come from? My help come from the Lord that made heaven and earth. So you need to look beyond the physical and look beyond the physical and look unto God. And when you look unto God as your help, God definitely will show face. Again, the final section is confession. It is important we confess our faith. The faith that uh, the children of Israel had to cross the Red Sea was totally different compared to the faith they need to operate in the promised land. So when the spies were sent forth, they came back with evil report. They cried out unto God that they would they have died this and that, and that and destroyed almost all of them. About two million people left Egypt, including men and women. 
uh, including uh, men, women, children, but only two people, Joshua and Caleb, came entered in. Why? The people that were sent to spy the city came back, gave evil report. So for you to enter in, as we have moved into a new season, never allow negative report to be part of your life. Cut off every negative report. Every negative, it could be coming from your friends. It could be coming from your televisions. It could be coming from your Facebook. It could be coming from all different angles and areas. Cut off negative reports. Because the negative report these guys had destroyed them. They said they were not able because of what? Negative report. In fact, out of 12 people that went to spy the land, 10 gave negative report. That is easy to believe the negative report. They said we are not able, we are this, we are that, except two men. The two men that stood for God, others wanted to stone them. Joshua and Caleb said, no, we are able. Others said, no, we are not able. In fact, the, their voices always dwarfed the voices of Joshua and Caleb. So what God is expecting you to do, God is a compassionate God. He's a merciful God. God wants you to change your confession. God wants you to change your attitude, some of your attitudes. Because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing. Also, your faith is destroyed by hearing negative words. Your faith, your spiritual lives, they are destroyed by negative attacks, negative words that do not have bearing according to the promises of God. So God, this morning, wants you to build your faith. Wants you to take some actions. God is happy that you will have the promises. But you need to do certain things. And one of them is confession. You need to be strong. You need to confess your faith. You need to walk with God. You need to say, no, 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 no. Our God is able. And because our God is able... He has the power to bring the change you need. He has the power to intervene in every situation. Says women, they had their dead one came back to life. I can testify about that. You have had the testimonies in my life. Women, men, they, their dead ones came back to life. Why? They believed the invisible God. They believed on the promises of God. People held, restored. The woman with issue of blood said, if I can touch the hem of this Christ garment, it's over. And she did that. She obtained promises. Life changed. So today, God is asking you, would you still be in the old season or would you move to a new season? If you are going to move to a new season, you need to change your belief. You need to make a U-turn from things that are not of God to things that God is asking you to do.